just saw a whole bunch of dolphins mm. playing and swimming and thrashing about. I think I hit something and messed up the port engine. There is a person and a wrecked tank over here that they must shoot at. Um, we ran aground. They wanted a thousand dollars. With Caterpillar floating again, we set off for Wilmington. A little over 100 miles down the ICW, motoring eight hours a day, we hope to be there in three days. The ditch, as it's often called, requires mechanical dredging to keep it at a navigable depth, but with tidal currents, rivers and streams, storms, and even boat traffic, the shifting sands are notoriously unreliable. We're going to take a right and go south on the ICW, uh, heading towards Swansboro for tonight. And uh, hopefully we'll get there before dark. Dan Lee's sitting up at the bow looking for dolphins, scouting, and I'm steering the boat. About 2,600 RPM, it's a little loud, time for a little lunch, and chicken salad sandwiches, macaroni salad that the princess made, it's good, gourmet good. current. You can see a little bit, I don't know if you can see that pole, you can see the current working against us. We're going about 5.8 statute miles per hour, but we should be going about 7 or more with this RPM. should be in Swansboro in about 4 hours. U.S. inland waterways use a slightly different set of navigation rules, and the unit of measure is statute miles and miles per hour instead of nautical miles and knots. This mini air show would go on for almost two hours. I don't know if you can pick this up, but these guys are really loud. As ear-splittingly loud as they were, we couldn't help but be reminded, that's the sound of freedom. It's practically hovering. You can almost see the jet stream going straight down. If you know what kind of aircraft these are, please let us know in the comments section down below.
find some place to go. Our chart plotter didn't have the electronic charts for the U.S. inland waterways, so we navigated with just our GPS position coordinates, a paper chart, and basic dead reckoning. Is that right, 42? 40 alpha. You got the dividers out? I do. Okay, next you're going to do a star... Uh, Compass rose? No, uh, what do they call it? Celestial... Celestial navigation. Celestial uh, reading, so you can find out where we are on our <laughs> cheap paper charts that we had printed at Office Max. Hey, don't knock my charts. No, they. I mean, where would we be without them? We wouldn't know. ICW. We wouldn't know. So it turns out that uh, sailing into the sunset sounds pretty romantic until the sunset is staring you right directly in the face and you can't see the nav markers and where the hell you're going and anything you want to look at like your GPS coordinates uh, all just look like a big yellow green blur blob because you can't take your eyes off the water uh, or else you'll get outside the channel. So it's, a, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Motoring at, oh, by the way, yeah. Motoring at like two and a half miles an hour with one engine because um, I think I hit something and messed up the port engine and had to shut it down. So it's like torture, but we get there, we're moving. We made it to Swansboro uh, just after sunset. We actually had to turn the nav lights on for about 20 minutes. But uh, we fought a current the whole way down and passed the inlet just two miles up. And as soon as we passed it, the current came to behind us. And we were like shot out of a cannon. We were going almost six, six miles an hour. I think we have it uh, set to because ICW, six miles an hour after plugging under three most of the way down. So there was the sunset. Swansboro, a uh, little town, is right back here. And uh, we're at this Dudley's Marina. And Dan Lee went to pay for our overnight slip. And uh, yeah, it was pretty exciting pulling in here. Uh, we have a that five knot, or well, it wasn't a five knot current. We were going five, but uh, the probably two and a half knot current against us and we had all of our lines and, and fenders on the starboard side and as we tried to pull in to get to starboard on the dock the current was pushing us this way so we had to dock up port side and uh, quickly switch all the lines and fenders over but I think we managed to do just fine time for beer and maybe some food we're gonna have to walk into town over there and find a restaurant and now we are all tied up oh we're ubering it's like a 15 minute walk into swansboro we're um, gonna uber to the irish pub over that bridge there's a bridge with no no pedestrian lane on it so we're all so. we're all cleaned up now and ready for dinner if, if cleaned up means we changed our clothes <laughs> uh yeah we're ready for dinner it is day two the morning, uh, old dark hundred almost. Not right. <laughs> it's old, old bright hundred because the sun is up. So it's about I don't know 7:30 in the morning. And now we are motoring south towards topsail. And a awesome sun at my back. Much better. I'm sure it'll be coming down in front of me by the time we get there. You 
get that? There is a person and a wrecked tank over here that they must shoot at. Looks, look over to the port. They don't shoot us. There's more little orange people. We just are motoring past a military uh, shooting range where we had signs that said, um, be careful with lights are flashing, do not proceed, live firing in progress. And uh, we saw some tanks that were all shot up, silhouettes of people supposedly. And we are motoring south. Uh, with the current uh, at our back, which is nice, making about 5.8 pretty steadily. Um, it is about 11 something in the morning. Uh, high tides at noon, so I'm afraid our world is going to change at noon and the tide shifts and starts going the other way, but we shall see. Why don't you hail them? Here we go. Go ahead. Before we get squirrely. One of the beauties of catamaran design is that with two separate motors and propellers, they can be much easier to maneuver under power than a monohull sailboat. But with one side disabled, the opposite quickly becomes true. Since the remaining propeller is so far from the center line, it is nearly impossible to control the boat at slow speeds. Engaging the starboard side propeller just makes the boat want to turn hard to port. The kind of speed through the water necessary to make the rudders effective isn't exactly practical when the bridge doesn't open in time or when approaching or leaving a dock. How cool was that? That was awesome! Getting late on day two as we're coming into Surf City, hopefully in the next hour or less. Uh, but we just had some fun a uh, little ways back. We had a, ran into a little, a little issue. Um, we ran aground. So I've always heard that there are two types of sailors, those that run aground and those that lie about it. Uh, called Sea Tow, they wanted a thousand dollars just to pull us off the sandbar. So this afforded us an opportunity to learn a new skill called kedging. And what kedging uh, comes down to is Bill got in the dinghy with our secondary anchor and rowed out behind the boat and we set the anchor. We rowed out back 100 yards or so, dropped it in and we put the line on the winch and we winched ourselves free, sort of. It was a little bit more complicated than that. Tried to crank it in and we weren't going anywhere. We had to wait for a couple big boats to come by and, um, and actually just the, the action of the wake um, got us the last little bit off the sandbar. The wake bounce this up and I put it in reverse and crank, Danny cranked on the winch 
and uh, and the boat wake lifted us up enough to move us back enough to uh, get us off the um, the shoal there. Uh, it seemed like we were in the channel, and we saw some, a powerboat earlier today that ran aground that appeared to be in the channel also. So um, while I love boating, ICW stuff is mm, maybe not for me. Anyway, that's uh, my report. Unfortunately, between you and me and the whole world on the internet, if you're watching this, we had to abandon that anchor because uh, we had limited ability to maneuver and actually ended up getting stuck a second time and then got off on our own without kedging and uh, decided to abandon that anchor because we couldn't get it hauled up without, um, without risking getting stuck again. So we had to leave it there. With some careful maneuvering and a little bit of luck, we managed to get tied up at the Top Sail Island Marina before dark. We have a beautiful moon, beautiful sky here in Surf City, Top Sail Island, all kinds of shops and restaurants. It's day three, it's already about 11.30 a.m. Uh, Got a little busy with getting out of the uh, marina this morning because we were right next to a swing bridge and our limited ability to maneuver with the one engine had us a little tricky getting out of the marina and then holding up, waiting in time to get the bridge open was uh, quite challenging. So got on our way, now we're motoring south about five miles an hour right now. Uh, we were going to, originally the plan was to go all the way to Wilmington today, but um, that was when we had two good engines, or reasonably good engines, but so uh, now it looks like we're going to go right before snow's cut and uh, tie up there at a marina and spend the night and then finish the trip tomorrow up the uh, Cape Fear River to our marina. Um, a little worried about the current in the river, so I didn't want to try challenging that fight and sunset at the same time. So we're gonna make it a four day trip. On the next leg of sailing SV Caterpillar, our unscheduled stop turns out to be a highlight of the trip. This is by far the best place we've stopped. This is the um, owner, one of the owners, Bliss. We are in the Cape Fear River now. We make it to Wilmington Marine Center and find out what had disabled our engine. If we had a dive mask, I would I could have gone down. And... Oh, oh, oh. What's a pound now for stone crack class? Gonna crawl around the world. Thanks for watching. Do us a favor and subscribe to our channel, click the thumbs up button, and leave a comment down below. And remember, on SV Caterpillar, we take it one leg at a time.